Okay, I'm going to try to do this super fast. So this started out as like about a 30 minute talk and I cut it down to try and fit into 20 minutes and then I figured out I only had 15 minutes. I'm going to try and do this in under five because I know it's already after five. Everybody wants to get their plane, get dinner, etc. So bear with me. I'm going to try and do every slide in just one or two sentences. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Integrative genomics is hard. This is one particular experiment, and one of the reasons it's hard is because every time you jump tools, you have to jump file formats, you have to do work outside of the tools to get between them. So in that particular experiment, there's a lot of transitions, and the idea we came up with is if we make these transitions easier, science can accelerate. Nothing already existed that did this the way we wanted it to. But there were things out there in the world that were interesting that were doing stuff like this. Facebook APIs where you can easily plug stuff in and use their technology. So we built genome space. We started with six tools, Cytoscape of course, that's why I'm here. We hooked them all together. And we used three driving biological projects, real research projects using multiple tools to keep us honest. And we also have an outreach uh, component. That's what I'm doing here today, quickly. We've got a bunch of servers that are running in the Amazon cloud. They actually don't do very much. Most of the heavy lifting is done over here by Amazon's stuff itself and by the tools which all talk through our servers to each other. These are the tools that we started with. And we've got a user interface that lets you do things like manage the data that you've loaded into the cloud, manage your tools, add your own new tools into the system, uh, tag tools, stuff like that. And in one of our tools, Gene Pattern, it looks sort of like this. One click login with OpenID, hooked into the user interface in a couple of spots up in the menus in the pane where you can, again, manipulate your cloud-based data. And you can actually send data directly to other tools in the environment without going back to that genome space UI two slides ago. We also have a Cytoscape plugin, so you can pull data down into Cytoscape directly from genome space, launch Cytoscape from the other tools, and do other fun stuff like that. One of the key aspects to making this easier for people to use is actually using automatic data transformation. You can find out what transforms are there just going into the app, going to the about page. Generally speaking, we build these in response to scientist requests. So if you've got something that you want to move in from one tool to another, ask us. We'll either build it or we'll find somebody who already has and hook it in. It takes almost no time. We use OSGI for this just like Cytoscape 3. We do other stuff too. One of the big focuses is on collaboration, so you can share tools with each other, you can share data with each other, either just small groups that you manage or out to the public at large, totally open, free, unencrypted. Um, and you'll soon be able to plug in your own storage. Right now you can plug in your own S3 buckets as well as using ours. Soon you'll be able to plug in lots of other cloud storage or local storage. We uh, opened up to beta on I can't remember which day, but it was sort of late April of this year. Uh, most of the six seed tools and all of the other four you'll see in a second are already in their public production versions. We've got about 1,155 users now. Uh, we see about 200 tool launches a week, and that doesn't count any launches of those tools that use Genome Space. And we've got about 1.7 terabytes of data that's been uploaded into uh, our bucket that people are using. Like I said before, we got a plugin for Cytoscape 2.8. A little bit of investigation has been done about porting it to 3.0. We're going to make that happen early in the next year. And it takes less than a day. If you want your plugin for all of the developers here to use Genome Space 2 to be able to save or store data or to launch the other tools, it takes less than a day to hook it in. Most of the work is hooking it into your UI. And I know this because these guys up here at EBI, they did it last month. It took them about one day of effort. Most of that was playing with their UI. It took them three calendar days, less than one programmer day of effort to do it. Um, since we released in silico, also joined us. They give you access to all of the geo data sets, uh, Systrome for ChipSeq data, and GE Workbench at Columbia who do a whole variety of analyses. They've got about 100 different tools hooked in. 
Uh, the Archon Genomics X Prize used us for their scoring system. So if you've heard about that, that was the sequencing 100 genomes in 30 days of centenarians for less than $10,000 each. And if you want to know how they used us, they posted a video on YouTube. You can go check that out. Uh, we like lots of projects. We like to collaborate with people. Two of those groups are here today or were here yesterday, the uh, Synapse folks and Reactome, who you saw just a moment ago. And we want people to use this. The real key is for this to actually help scientists play with it, tell us what works, tell us what didn't work. If you are a app developer, hook it into your, hook it into your plugin so that you can start using the other tools or launching the other tools. Lots of people worked on it. And thank you, Alex, because this has been a really interesting uh, uh, conference. Just yesterday alone, I downloaded five PDFs from scholar.google.com of different people who were up here talking. It was a really, it was a really fun experience and trying to do this in uh, how many, five minutes and four seconds, I think I'm done for now. I knew you'd be a strong maker. Like, well.